Hey everybody, this is Tara and it is Sunday, so I'm at karate today. Um, this is day 46 or 47 of my 90 day blogging and um, I'm here with Sensei Robert Mason. at We're at American International Karate Institute and the thing about this um, style of karate, it's different from other styles. It's called motokai, which means unlimited way. So I'm here with Robert Sensei, and I'm going and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you some questions. Okay. And I gotta look into. I, it's interesting. I want to look in the camera at the same time, but right. whatever. I'll ask you. Like, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So motokai. What is different about this style versus other styles of karate? And like, how did it come about? And okay. like, what that stuff? Well, all karate styles originally came from Okinawa, from the island of Okinawa. And when they trained in Okinawa, traditionally, um, they, they, had, they weren't allowed to carry swords or weapons. So, uh, whereas a swordsman would normally uh, hold his sword and have the blade up here and he'd have his hands in place, um, it was normal if he dropped the sword to just draw the hands back and have this low chamber position for the hands. They would fight with the, with the hand down here. And so the classical karate styles all started with the hands down here, uh, developing these power strikes from the hip. Um, what happened was in 1982, when my teacher sensei passed away, we decided to make the style more contemporary and more based on the kickboxing system. So we brought the guard up. So we keep this hand chamber by the cheek and we do our strikes from here because this way you have more defense. Right? Also, uh, rather than being flat-footed and worrying about having this strong base, which was a, 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 a tradition in classical karate, we came up on the balls of our feet so we could move. So by being on the balls of the feet, you can sidestep, you can move in and out more quickly. It's a bit like if you were watching tennis, uh, the French Open's on at the moment. If people went in a tennis and took a stance like this, you think, oh, well, they're not going to win. You see the tennis players on the balls of their feet, so they're ready to move. So we use a lot of movement in the balls of the feet. We keep the guard up here so the hands are going out and back from this chamber position. And we throw all of our kicks from here and so on. And these are all of our first principle techniques. Our first principles include the punches, the kicks, the hand strikes, the blocks, all from this kickboxing stance. Second principles, which we get to around the, the goal belt level, second principles are more like judo. These are sweeping and throwing moves. So in other words, if the attacker steps in and you can walk and sweep him, you take his legs out, you take his foundation. Taking the foundation is the, is the second principle we teach. It goes along through all of our ranks. We always continue the first principle techniques, the strikes, blocks, kicks, and punches, but also from the gold belt level on, which is our first color belt, the second principle techniques begin. So all of the judo moves where you might uh, grab the uniform and sweep, or you might move in and throw, um, uh, Muay Thai moves like uh, a kick through, uh, or a, a cut kick to the standing leg, these would all be second principle techniques that we teach. Uh, as the students move along, by the time they get up to the green belt level, they're learning to use pressure point strikes to strike the weak spots in the, in the forearms in particular. And by learning to strike pressure points, you weaken the arm. And then from there, we, we, we go on to teach um, various kinds of um, wrist locks, arm locks, and so on. These moves, where you're, you're controlling the person by controlling their limbs, whether it's an arm, whether it's the neck by choking, um, these are third principle techniques. So these are taught third. And these techniques have a lot more in common with um, uh, jujitsu. My sensei's teacher was the grandmaster of the Shindo Yoshi Jiu-Jitsu system. So we've always taught a lot of Jiu-Jitsu. Our, our Jiu-Jitsu includes the stand-up Jiu-Jitsu, mm -hmm. where in the course of striking the opponent, maybe you'll put a lock um, and throw, or you might put a, a wrist lock or an armbar, um, a choke, uh, maybe like a, a, a standing guillotine. And then we move on from there as the students become more advanced. We, we move on to fighting from the ground, which is more similar to the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tend to focus just on fighting from the ground. We include that, but we include the stand-up Jiu-Jitsu as well. Cool. So our system in, incorporates these three fundamental principles, and these are the only three ways you can fight. So it's a complete system. It includes all of the principles for fighting. We also have classes in weapons and so on. But part of what makes our system different from others is that it's a contemporary system rather than, than classical and it includes all martial arts principles rather than just focusing on one or two of them. Cool. So it's like inclusive of all different styles and sure. stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, in other words, somebody watching it might say, oh, that looked more like judo or mm -hmm. oh, that looked look more like uh, Aikido um, because it includes all of the principles 
um, that are included in those systems. And it's, a, it, it's an all-inclusive method. Yeah. And so in this way, the students aren't limited. Some people will prefer one aspect over another, but my sensei, for example, Meiji Suzuki, he was a champion in both judo and karate. His teacher was the grandmaster of jiu-jitsu. And so we have a tradition that's long-standing uh, of this blended system, this mixed martial arts system. But by moving it in 1982 to where it, it begins from a kickboxing stance, and all of our techniques come from a kickboxing stance, making it more contemporary, um, it means it's a very um, up-to-date version of a mixed martial arts system. Cool. Same time, you know, back in 1982, most people weren't teaching mixed martial arts. Sorry about that. So, <laughs> so it, it's, a, it's a, a different approach from what you'll see other places. Cool, cool. So thus, it's un in the unlimited way. How did you guys come up with that name? Well, my sensei came up with the name. Uh, Mugendo is the system, and my style of Mugendo is called Murukai. So Mugendo, the Mugendo system, Mugendo means unlimited way. Mm -hmm. Murukai, my style, uh, means like unlimited way association um, or void way association, which uh, essentially was something that happened in 1984. My sensei was here teaching seminars for me. And at the end of the seminars, he, he awarded me uh, the position of being the chief instructor in my, my own style. So oh. my style of Mugendo is called Murokai. And I've been teaching my style of Mugendo since 1984. Cool. Um, but it conforms to the Mugendo system, which is based on this unlimited way approach and includes all martial arts principles. Great, great. Okay, well, there you have it. That's what differentiates Motokai and Mugendo from all the other styles, but it actually incorporates all other styles. Thus, in English, it stands for Unlimited Way. And thank you so much. This is Sensei Robert Mason. Uh, we are at American International Karate Institute in Plantation, Florida. And this is Tara. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, see you in the next blog. Bye.